In the previous video, we use an example to illustrate how to calculate correlation coefficient in Excel. In this video, uh, we are going to use the same example and I'm going to show you how to run regression analysis. First, I have copied some of the uh, information from the previous video. For example, x values, y values, mean of x, mean of y, standard deviation of x and y, sample size. And in the last video, we know that the coefficient of correlation R is 0.96522. And here, I'm going to show you once again different ways of calculating B0 and B1 in linear regression model. And here, I have the formulas for calculating B1 and B0. For calculating B1, the first part of formula is coming from the supplementary material. The second part of formula comes from the Khan Academy video. Actually, this formula can also be found in the next chapter of our textbook, chapter 15. First, let's start with the more complicated formula over here and let's see how the calculation is done. Okay, first of all we're going to find x squared and the product of x and y. To do that, first we get x1 squared and here we get x1 times y1. Then we are going to do the same thing for all the other 10 data points. And here I have the built-in formula already so that's why you see the sum of those two already. Let me erase that and show you the formulas. The sum of x squared is the sum of all those 11 numbers. The sum of x times y is equal to sum of those 11 numbers. Okay, now we are ready to use the formula over here to calculate B1. We gotta be very careful. It's equal to sum of the product of x and y which is f16 minus n simple size 11 times x bar which is 2003 times y bar which is 37.18 divided by the sum of x squared which is in E16 minus N times X bar squared return. We get B1 is equal to 0 0.9. To get B0, very easy. B0 is equal to Y bar minus B1 times X bar return. B0 is equal to negative 1765. Okay, now let's try the easier formula, the formula from our supplementary material. To find B1, it is equal to R times SY divided by SX return it is 0 0.9 to calculate B0 same thing 
y bar minus b1 times x bar. Okay, this is the formula based calculation of b0 and b1. And next, let me show you something very interesting. Here, we are going to use solver to find b0, b1. At the very beginning, we don't know what b0 and b1 might be. We can just make some random guess. Okay, in order not to get some outrageous numbers, let's say uh, b1 is, okay, 1, and b0 is negative 10, and once we know those two numbers, we can make predictions based on the years. Okay, let's see how can we do that. Based on B0 is negative 10 and B1 is 1, the predicted age in 1998 will be equal to B0 plus B1 times X. Okay, now the prediction is 1988. Of course, it's way off, right? And it's because we just randomly select two numbers. Uh, they are not even close. But that's okay. We can do the calculation the same way. Okay, the predicted age for 1998 is 1988. The forecast error or residual is the actual age 32 minus our prediction. Okay, we have a forecast error of negative 1956. The squared error, well, it's nothing but I column squared. We are going to do the same thing for all the other 10 as well. Now let's pay attention to the J column. It is squared error, focus error squared. And in order to find the best values for B0 and B1, we are actually to minimize the sum of all those squared errors. We give it a name called SSE. It means sum of squared errors. So let's do that. Sum of all those squared errors. Okay. It's a huge number. In this case, it's about 420 millions. But what we can do is that we can change our guess, right? We can say make B1 maybe 2 or 0 0.6. And we can change B0 to negative 100 or positive 2000. We can do anything we want. But our target is nothing but minimizing sum of squared focus errors. Okay, here's where solver kicks in. Let's give it a try. Data, solver. Our target is in cell J16 where SSE is. Well, we would like to minimize it by changing what? By changing B0 and B1. They are in my cell I18 and I19. Okay, there are a few things we gotta be very careful in solver parameters. First of all, this is going to be a nonlinear model because they are squared errors. So it's not linear, but non-linear. Second, let's click options. There's one thing we want to make sure, okay? Under GRG non-linear, required bounds on variables? No. The default value in solve is actually this box is checked, but we want to make sure we uncheck this box. Click OK, and then Actually, this model has no constraints. B0 and B1 can be anything. 
all we need to do is to click solve let's keep the solver solution okay and no surprise we got almost identical values for b1 and b0 the only reason we see a very very uh, small difference between those numbers is simply because of rounding errors okay now use the solver we find another way finding the values of b0 and b1 they are nothing but the two parameters that minimize the sum of squared errors and with that we can calculate SE the formula for SE can be found in the uh, material it's equal to the square root of SSC divided by sample size minus 2 which is 0.852 okay next let's calculate something we call SST SST is nothing but sum of squared total deviation deviation from what? actually deviation from the mean and you see the formula over here so let's give it a try okay y1 minus y bar which is 37.18 squared and we do the same thing for all the other 10 and to get SST it's simply the sum of those 11 numbers SST is 95.63 okay what does that mean is sum of the total variation from the mean of 37 and this total variation has two components one is the error the sum of squared focused errors the other portion of SST is everything that can be explained by our regression model the reason we calculate SST is nothing but calculating R square. The formula for calculating R square can be found on page 160 of the supplemental material. It's equal to 1 minus SSE divided by SST. Return it's equal to 0.9316. Actually, there is a much easier way calculating R square. It's nothing but the square of our coefficient of correlation. Let's give it a try. There's no surprise at all. Those two R squares are equal. However, the reason we don't use the easier way is this works for simple linear regression models only simple linear regression models are the ones in which we have one x in most models we're going to have x1 x2 x3 and so on and so forth in multiple cases we are going to use this formula okay next let's look at the meaning of r square and r square means this in this example about 93.2 percent of variance in mean age of cyclists killed in accidents can be accounted for by the years and that tells us this linear regression model is quite accurate which can explain about 93.2 percent of variation in mean ages and similarly 
the interpretation of B1, in our case, B1 is equal to 0.9. The actual meaning of B1 in this example is the following. The mean age of cyclists killed in accidents has increased by about 0.9 years of age per year during 1998 to 2008. And one main purpose of regression model is prediction. For example, suppose we would like to predict the mean age of cyclists killed in accident in year 2009 all the way to 2013. And here's how we should do that. It's equal to B0 plus B1 times 2009 return. And we can do the same thing for all the other four years. Okay, based on our regression model, what do we know? We expect that in year 2009, the mean age of cyclists killed in accidents would be 42.58 years. And similarly, the prediction for 2010 would be 43.48 years, and so on and so forth. It took us quite a while to figure out B0, B1, SSE, R square, and information like that. As a matter of fact, in Excel, things like that can be done much, much faster. And this is the last thing I'm going to show you. All right, let's click Data tab, under which we're going to select Data Analysis. That's where we find correlation. But this time, we're going to look for something called regression. Select it and click OK. In regression analysis, we got to tell Excel two things. One is our Y range. They are nothing but our mean age. And what about X range? They are years from B4 to B14. And I want to generate the results in the new worksheet. That's it. We click OK and see what we can get. All right. Okay, in this summary output of regression analysis, first and foremost, where can we find B0 and B1? B0, right here, negative 1765, B1, 0.9. What about R square? 0.9316. What about our coefficient of correlation. They're right here. 0.9652. And what about SSE? Remember, SSE is sum of squared errors. Focused errors are also called residuals. So they're here, SSE. Let me highlight those things. And standard error SE right here, 0.85. SSE and SST, they are right here. And of course, don't forget about B0 and B1. Indeed, the regression analysis of Excel gives us more information. But at this point of time, uh, make sure we know B0, B1, SSE, SST, R, R square, and SE.